Can you tell me the ship scuttling story? I don't know. Is uh, statute of limitations over? I hope so. I was called upon by these drug dealers to get rid of a boat. I didn't know why. But they said they wanted the boat sunk. First they offered it to me and I didn't want it. It was too big. So they called me up and they we met outside the Montauk Bell buoy. I bought a shotgun and a couple of cases of shells and we opened up the seacocks and ran the engines, filling the filling the hull full of water and it took five hours to sink the bastard. And she finally fucking sunk. That was horrible, horrible feeling sinking a boat. Don't like it. That was my first one. James Nathaniel Goldberg. <laughs> Jim. Um, commercial fisherman. Uh, I build surfboards. I fix surfboards. I'm uh, just an all around nice guy. <laughs> Really? Cool. So I've been out here for 63 years. Why did I start surfing? Because from a little kid, I always loved the water, and I was always on the water. I used to go to the beach all the time, and I enjoyed getting drilled by waves and going over the falls. And I don't love it. So I did doing repair because it's one of the only things that I had to do. I make it look so easy, don't I? Oops, fuck that up. People, when they come in here, they always want to tell me how they got the thing, which I really don't care, because I can usually tell by looking at the board. What happens if another thing with that guy comes to Montauk? I'll cut his fucking hands off. You have to recess it for a little bit. What's it like being a fisherman? It's the hardest thing you can possibly imagine doing. It's really, really difficult, difficult, hard, hard physical labor. You don't sleep. Lifting the weights that we lift, the, the bushel baskets, uh, 35,000 pound trips, is hard even it, just on land. So you can imagine when it's blowing 20 to 30 knots and the, and the, and the boat's rocking like a son of a bitch. It, Go fishing and drink. You know, you always got a reason to drink. You didn't catch fish, you drink. You caught, you caught a lot of fish, you drink to celebrate. You know, it's it's, uh, it's all part of the it's all part of fishing life. I do it because I produce a primary resource and I feed people. It's a one of the best feelings for me is after. Fishing three or four days or whatever, usually a three, four, five day trip and filling the hole full of fish. Coming in, it's a nasty night, it's really shitty. It's coming in the dark and you're looking at the land and you finally see the first lights on, on shore and you know everybody's asleep. You know nobody knows where you're, what you're doing or what's going on, but you know what you've got on your boat is gonna feed an awful lot of people and that's the greatest feeling, super good feeling. Making money's a big, big part of it though. Once a fisherman, always a fisherman. You can't get it out of your blood. I don't do it for sport. I don't do it for the pleasure. I don't kill fish because I like to kill it and it makes me feel like a man. I do it to feed people, period. I get no pleasure out of killing things at all. So I just went to the um, shark tournament yesterday. Oh, what a fucking waste. What a waste of freaking killing fish for no apparent reason. It's so stupid. Killing blue sharks, that's the easiest thing in the world. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. And for what? For why, why? To, to see who catch the biggest shark, it's stupid. Anybody can do it. And what happens to the fish? They waste them. And that's the worst. They're all gonna go to hell. All of them. So I'm talking to summer, it's the greatest place in the world. One of the nicest places I've ever been to in my life. I love it. I said, look around. Look at all the pretty girls. Look at all the nice people. This is fantastic. Because in the wintertime, all you see is a bunch of drunken, stupid, ugly old fishermen. So this is nice. I like I like the crowds. Don't bother me. Not that. 